So I, I presented Vivian's Garden at the festival, which is a film that I shot in Guatemala, in Panajachel, um, which shows the world and the life of two women, mother and daughter. And uh, they're both artists, they're Swiss Austrian emigres. Um, my mother, Elizabeth, is in her 90s and her daughter in her 60s. And they live in two houses in the same compound, which is like a kind of in a jungle, really, in their, this garden that Vivian has grown over the last 30 years. And um, in a way, it shows how they live, how they make art in that, um, in that jungle garden setting how they exist as a kind of microeconomy with their guardians, as they call them, the, um, two men who kind of take care of the house and the garden and them, and a cook, um, cleaner, and I guess how they care for one another and how... Um, how it's really a, a lot to do with care in their relationship and also between mother and daughter but also in a way between me and Vivian in a sense and, and between um, that I am sometimes was like her mother and sometimes she was like my mother and so it's really about in a way mothering uh, in another way it's really a depiction of a place which is I found to be um, of a dual nature, both a place of healing and a place of terror, of fear, because in, they're menaced there by the ecological factors, by flooding, by hurricanes, uh, causing cat catastrophic flood, but also by a certain sort of lawlessness in the town and occasional threat and menace from neighbours who in some ways may be taking care of them in other ways um, yeah menacing bullying um, so that on the one side but on the positive side this incredible healing place of great beauty and, and kind of enchanted place so on the one hand, it can be easily read on first impressions uh, as a colonial situation. Indeed, it is colonial. You have two uh, women from Europe who are, in real terms, much better off than everybody else in the village. I mean, apart from the other expats. So, in that sense, you know, they can afford to employ people to take care of them, but they're also vulnerable. So yes, this is a sort of, uh, certainly a colonial um, economic, let's say, uh, migrancy in a way, of, on their part. Um, but there is, that system is, is a system which works also um, in subtle ways. So and sometimes I feel that the Guardian Don Tomas, or the younger one, uh, uh, Juan, particularly the older one, I think it's, there's a sort of mothering as well, this care that I was talking about. He's also taking care and they are very much involved in, in his life too, in this, as much as he wants them to be. And the same with Juan, the younger one. So, um, yeah, it's, it's, not an, it's not something you can, I feel you can just dismiss as... Uh, as sort of oh this is this is uncomfortable this is morally wrong well actually there is there is life there are relationships there are there are systems at work there is a beautiful way that they make work and live without boundaries between the two um, often work for an artist or for anyone and life are rather separate and then I feel that in their world they're completely intertwined, you know, and so showing their life is, and showing their work is not somehow uh, separate for me. I only ever have shot on 16 millimeters, so I don't exactly know what's possible in other media, you know, digital shooting, but I'm not, I'm very, 
I'm very accustomed to that way of working. When I'm shooting some situation with people in it, it's very important that I'm engrossed in my work, you know, and I, that I am on a film shoot, I am involved in many technical, physical and mathematical issues around the, the technical aspect. And I think that that kind of um, discipline allows the subject to uh, also feel absorbed in what she's doing. I wasn't thinking about the time of the film. I was thinking about Vivian and Elizabeth and me. You know, so there are some points in which I put in, well, I put in the little um, snatch of a Miyazaki film, um, Kiki's Delivery Service, because there's a scene in that film where uh, Kiki, who's a young witch, goes to, finds herself in the woods and meets an artist who's living in a wood house. And the artist is an older, for her, an older woman. And they start a friendship in which this older artist helps the young witch to um, recover her ability to work as a witch, find her magic again, or somehow like take some time out and relax. And um, so what I'm saying is, it, yes, I guess that, that point in the film kind of locates you in time. But my reason for putting it in was more locating myself there, like bringing my ideas. And also there's a point at which, well, there are several lines which I ask Vivian to say, that I wrote for her to say. And one of them, you know, she says, no one wears their best clothes on a ship, not even kings. And, you know, she was very kindly read, read out the lines that I've written, didn't really mean anything to her, but meant a lot to, that meant a lot to me about their life, because I felt that they were almost like living in a ship outside of space and time. And also kind of what we say, um, all hands on deck. I mean, like building a life that they're living, bit by bit as they're living it, because they are alone and defining their own world, whereas most of us are kind of navigating other institutions that others have built. So the time of the film is like, probably like the time of being on a ship, which is like no time, you know, outside time.